this just in, pumpkin exploding everywhere, including your beer aisle. Today I will be drinking Autumn Harvest by Rubens Brews, an imperial pumpkin ale. That's a pretty beer. Uh, to the light side of amber, just a little bit. I mean, it's it's pretty safely in amber territory, um, but very pumpkin-like in its color, as one might expect, I suppose. Though this is actually pumpkin, not simply pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice is simply the spices you expect to find in pumpkin pies, or that pumpkin goes well with. Pumpkin is a different thing. It's what the spices go with. Perfect for cool, crisp fall days, five varieties of malt offer a degree of caramel-like sweetness and a showcase for pumpkin, while notes of baking spices complement the rich mouthfeel. We'll be testing that. Being an Imperial, this is going to be a higher ABV, and indeed it is 8.7%. So, I mean, to the relative low side of the Imperial beer, um, I would expect that extra alcohol to carry some rich flavors. We've been hit or miss with pumpkin beers over the last few years on this channel. Um, there's one that I'm still looking forward to getting this year, the uh, Great Gourds of Fire by Hopworks out of Portland, which has always been a delicious beer for, uh, for pumpkins. And I think there was a, an apple cider last year that had some decent pumpkin flavors to it. Uh, but in general, I found the that I haven't enjoyed all that many of the pumpkin beers I've drunk. I know there's a lot that I haven't. Uh, but let's uh, take one more off the list of one I haven't, because this is not one I've had before. Hmm, to the nose. I think this might benefit from being a bit warm. Er, than it is. I took it out of the fridge ten minutes ago, probably, and uh, I did hold it in my hands a little bit in the can, at least, expecting that warmth would benefit Generally with an Imperial or a higher ABV beer, <clears throat> it being not quite so frigid cold is not a bad thing. Um, if it's an Imperial IPA, maybe, maybe not, but in general the higher alcohol content, the higher malt bill, generally those warm, round, middle, uh, rich flavors are going to be more prominent and possibly even dominant, and those are certainly not harmed by being warmer. For pumpkin beers, that is beers that have pumpkin and not simply pumpkin spice, I expect them to have, depending on how they've treated the pumpkin, um, vegetable, gourd, squash, very nice like garden end of the year sort of flavors. I suppose that's obvious. But I also think that, in my experience, pumpkin responds well to fire. And so, for instance, the Great Gourds of Fire, which specifically has roasted pumpkin, I really like the intensity of flavor and slight smoky burned quality that comes through in that beer. Um, that's really, think, I think, something that sets it apart from a lot of the others. Smell-wise, yeah, there's a little bit of pumpkin in there. There's also kind of a... Uh, a raw pumpkin bread, like a pumpkin bread batter kind of uh, smell to it. So um, it's almost a minerality with a, um, like a baking soda kind of note. What spices there are? Nutmeg, possibly? They're not particularly pronounced at this point. Oh, okay. I think I'm starting to pick up the pumpkin. There's a rich earthiness with a, um, well, a pumpkin-like character to it, right? <laughs> it's there. It's definitely there. Overall, the smell is relatively mild for an Imperial, and I'm probably going to say this several more times, but it does bear repeating. Um, this Imperial could probably deal with being warmer. It would probably brighten things up or just allow those middle flavors, which is what pumpkin is. Pumpkin is a middle flavor. And the pumpkin spices, they're middle flavors. They're not acidic. They're not super sweet. They're not down in the bottom, uh, you know, smoky and, and dark and fire. They're not dark chocolate. They're in the middle. 
right? Those middle flavors, I think, are the ones that really iconify a pumpkin. Hmm. Okay. There's a few strong characters going on there. I would say this is an understated pumpkin beer. It is more about a pretty decent imperial brown ale sort of thing than necessarily about shouting pumpkin or pumpkin spice. It is actually relatively warm to there already. Uh, so that, that slightly, the subtler nose, that's probably just how it is. I was kind of expecting more of a pumpkin pie, you know, which has a lot of sweetness to it. But this is more a really, a really nice, but not sweet brown bread with pumpkin spread over it maybe and just the barest hint of cinnamon and nutmeg yeah probably the alcohol brings a, a fair bit of warmth um, for being only 8.7 percent this is pretty boozy and and so you get the it's almost like the alcohol hits for alcohol hits first and then it has this really long linger. Like right now it feels as though alcohol is one of the primary flavors. Take that as it may. Um, that's just kind of what I'm tasting. The, you have this, the, kind of this, this initial kind of almost an alcohol bite. Then you get um, kind of a, a mashed pumpkin. Then just a subtle bit of spices. This nice kind of bready middle and then uh, an earthy hoppiness that's really quite nice it's balanced nicely it's it's select the hops are selected very nicely for this paired very nicely with this beer um, they really just kind of show up it's like all of a sudden oh I'm not tasting the bread and the pumpkin anymore now it's this nice really earthy finish like you'd expect to find in perhaps one of the drier of the Oktoberfests and then as that fades you're left with this really nice warmth which is Probably the the eight percent nine almost nine percent ABV speaking there. This is a good beer to savor, and I think because it eschews the sweetness that you might expect, because it sticks to the earthy squash and and very subtle spicing, I think it would go really well with. Um, well, just savoring outdoors on its own, but also with food. And in fact, I think it would work really nicely, like paired with dessert, like pumpkin pie, because it's so kind of earthy dry. And then your pumpkin pie is the sweetness and the, the commonality of the flavor would tie them together, would make them work nicely and play nicely together. But the difference, this being kind of earthy and dry and the pumpkin pie being sweet and luscious, I think that would be a really nice combination, actually. I can imagine sipping this around my fire pit as the oak leaves fall in a month here or so whenever they finally decide that summer's over. I guess it's a Japanese maple over there with all the, the purple leaves. It's pretty much given up already for the year. It's kind of funny how different trees got the memo what season it is <laughs> or got different memos what season it is. Yeah good stuff. I'm enjoying this. This is a this is a decently tasty beer for what it is. Um, it is recognizably pumpkin, and has a very nice, nice luscious without being sweet middle, and the nice earthy hop finish that's this nice kind of slow burn, and the imperial all stack up to be a pretty nicely balanced, interesting, unique take on a pumpkin beer. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been drinking and enjoying Autumn Harvest by Rubens Brews, Rubens Brewing. I'll catch y'all on the flip side.